So guys, today for the potato and chickpea curry, we're gonna start off with, first I'm gonna move these bits and bobs out of the way. And then what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna start preparing my vegetables for it. I'm gonna take my onion, I'm gonna take the top off, like that, get rid of that, I don't need that. Get it turned on the flat side and slice it lengthways. We only need half of this recipe, so I'm gonna take off the brown skin on this one half. If it sticks a little bit, just use the help of your knife, pull it back off the layers of onion. With that then, I'm just gonna slice this onion up. We want some nice long slices, it's gonna add a nice texture to the dish. Stop when you hit just about the root part where it starts to get a little hard. It's often not nice to have that in your curry. So is there a particular motion to chopping the onion? Yep, so what you wanna do is you wanna get your fingertips down and push forward so you get your first knuckles available. And you're gonna use those to guide your knife. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a nice rounded motion. So you push down and push forward, lift up and pull back. And it becomes quite a nice fluid motion. So we're gonna take one good clove of garlic. I'm gonna smash that. It's the easiest way to peel garlic. Take the skin off. Just remove that little bit of root that's at the one end. And rough chop that. Exactly the same motion again to make sure that you are working safe, but quick enough as well. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, uh, our ginger and we're gonna take a roughly about a thumb sized piece. So we're gonna take about that much off. Cut that. And with that, the easiest way to deal with ginger for me, keep that skin on, it's all flavor. I'm just gonna grate it. I'm grating it on a nice fine grater. By doing that, you're not gonna end up with massive lumps of ginger in your curry, and it's gonna help spread the flavor across the place as well. So, we don't need those bits anymore. I'm just gonna get my ginger out from the grater, pull that off to one side. Have a quick wipe down of your board, because there's quite a lot of water that's come out of the ginger. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get my chili sorted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the top of the chili off, discard that, take the chili between my hands and roll it from side to side. By doing that, the seeds will pop out. The reason I'm taking the chili seeds out is that it can make stuff very, very hot. Unless you really like hot food, keep them in but you have been warned. So, once you've got that sorted, next thing we're gonna do is with the same cutting motion again, we're gonna chop this chili up. We're gonna use a whole thing, because although we don't want it too hot, we wanna be able to feel the heat a little bit. Now be careful at this point not to touch your eyes or any other tender part because the chili will really, really sting you. Right. So that's the basis done there. That's going to be where all your flavour comes from and other such things like that. Um, this is kind of the makeup of a very basic, of a startup of a very basic curry, which is what we're after really. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my cumin seeds. I've got some nice whole cumin seeds here. The smell is wonderful, quite woody, but a really nice curried smell anyway. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get this pan just about hot. Yeah, I'm gonna start doing that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dry toast these cumin seeds off. That's nice and warm now. We don't want this too hot. So we're gonna get about a teaspoon's worth of cumin seed in there. So you're just putting those into a dry hot pan into a dry hot pan. What we're looking for here 
is for the oils, the natural oils that are in the cumin seeds that come out and help give their flavor away, which is what we're after. We're trying to extract as much flavor out of these as we can. So the pan, it just wants to be hot, so it's steaming a little bit before you put them in, or? Uh, you just want it warm through. So you don't want it hot, hot, but you want it warm through. Keep moving it, because the last thing you want to do is burn them. If you burn them, you'll get a really awful acrid taste in your mouth, and that's not what you're after. So as soon as you start getting that smell of the cumin seeds, which I'm just about starting to get now, lovely. At that point, we're gonna add our onions. So I've just added my ground coriander to my um, cumin and onions, and I'm just gonna give it a quick stir, get all that nicely mixed in as well. So with that, I'm gonna add a little bit of oil to that as well, because I don't want the onions to stick. Make sure you give it a good mix round. So we're effectively flavoring the onions with that cumin, and that's what we want. We want everything to merge together to be a really lovely flavor. So I've just turned that heat down a little bit. The reason I've done that is I don't want to burn this. I want to sweat it down, and ideally, if I can, cook it without a great deal of color. You're, you're cooking without color. So if you put stuff straight into a hot pan with some oil, what can happen is it can color and add a nice caramelize, uh, caramelization flavor, which is what you want for certain dishes. However, for this, we just want to take the unctuous taste from the onion, the cumin, and all the other elements to come together to merge into one really nice thing. So we're not looking for the caramelization. So we're just going to cook these down and sweat these down for a couple of minutes until the onion is nice and translucent and softened. Making sure you stir as you go That's so it what doesn't... you mean by sweating it? You're taking out the colour so they look translucent or sort of see-through? Exactly that, yeah. So you almost, they won't go 100% see-through, but they go see-through enough and they also go nice and soft as well. These onions are looking nice and soft now, which is what we're after. We're gonna add our chili, garlic, and our ginger to the pot. Give it a really good mix round. You start getting all the lovely smells off of it now from the ginger, the garlic, and the chili, and the onions. We're gonna add about half to three quarters of a tin of tomatoes. So I've got about half the tomatoes in there, which is what I'm after. And I'm gonna add about 100 to 150 mils of water. So what's that, is that a cup full or? Uh, it's just short of a cup full. I mean, you can add a mug in, you just gotta cook it out for a bit longer in order to get that nice texture. Turn that back up on high heat, bring it to the boil. And now, we're going to prepare our chickpeas and our potatoes ready to go in. What's the best way to peel potatoes then? Best way is using a, a peeler because you're going to get consistency across the board, less injury or risk of injury as well. However, if you don't have a potato peeler, I can show you another way as well. So, I'll quickly get this one done. Get it off to one side. And this is another way you can do it. Because we're doing cubes, we can keep ourselves kind of safe by simply taking off the ends and squaring it up, we call it. So what we're gonna do is straighten up one of the sides, turn it on, it's on the flat side, cut down the other side, again, spin it, again, and then again. So what you end up is with a square style potato. And with that, you can very carefully take off any of the extra bits of skin. And 
ready for when you need to get them cut into cubes. To get it cut into cubes, you're gonna do some nice long square style bits of potato. And again in half. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut them into nice bite-sized cubes. Now, the bigger you do these, the longer it's gonna to take to cook. That's one potato done. I'll make sure I turn this down to a simmer. And do exactly the same with this potato. In half. And then into some nice bite-sized cubes. You wanna try and aim to get these roughly the same size. By getting them the same size, they will then cook more evenly and be a nicer texture throughout your curry. Once you've got those bits cut, you're gonna add them to your curry sauce. What you might need to do is keep an eye on your curry sauce. If you find that you don't have a great deal of liquid there, add a bit more water. It's as simple as that. What we're gonna do now is bring that back up to the boil. The next thing to go in are your chickpeas. Now chickpeas will often come canned like this. So all you need to do is get them opened and drained. And once you've got them drained, you wanna get them rinsed in some cold water as well, just through a sieve or something like that. Once you've got them rinsed, simply get them in the curry as well. Give them a good mix round. We just need to give that chance to cook. That'll be on for probably 20, 30 minutes for those potatoes to be nice and soft throughout. So we're about 10 minutes away from the curry being cooked. So we're gonna get the rice done and ready. Decent amount of time for it to steam so it goes really lovely and soft and fluffy. So how long has the curry been cooking for? Somebody? It's been cooking for about 20 minutes so far. So we're, we're just looking for that little extra time just to get those potatoes nicely cooked. So in my pan at the moment, I've got a cup of water. I'm gonna add to it another cup of water. So your rule of thumb with your rice is for every measure of rice, you have two measures of water, whether it be a mug, whether it be a spoon, however you want to go about it. Just make sure your rice is nicely to the top of the cup. To that, to the water, I'm just going to add a little bit of salt. This just helps give the rice a bit more flavour and it kind of rounds off the dish better. In goes the rice. Make sure we get all of that out there. So our rice has nicely absorbed all that water now. Next thing I wanna do is wanna get a plate or something on top, turn that heat off and give it a chance to steam. The steaming will help it go nice and fluffy and ready to be eaten, really nice. If you find when you're taking your rice out and you find it's stuck to the bottom of the pan, get a little bit of water in there, back on the heat and bring it up to a boil and that'll loosen it and get it easy for you to get out. You don't wanna eat that. You don't wanna eat that, no. It's, I mean, some people do. It's a nice rice crisp, if you like. Not quite rice crispies, though. 
That rice is all nice and steamed now. So let's have a look. Really nice and fluffy. That's going to be lovely to eat, is that? Get that off to one side. Grab my plate out ready. This amount of rice will happily do two or three different people, depending on the cup size you use. So we're gonna just go for a, 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 a serving spoon and a half worth of rice. Get that off to one side. It's been cooking for about half an hour now. So those potatoes will be really nice and soft. Those chickpeas will help add to the texture of it as well. Now that they're fine like that, we're gonna get a good pinch of salt. Get that in there. Give it a nice mix up. And then a couple of spoonfuls on a plate, ready to be eaten. If you want to zing this up a little bit, give a good squeeze of lemon and a nice small handful of fresh coriander. Give it a really nice extra bit of taste.